Here's a linear programming example similar to those that will be asked in the homework with my math lab. This is a theater production. The tickets for adults are $16. The tickets for students are $8. Our constraints are that the theater can only hold 150 people. And also, for every two adults, you must have at least one student. Our goal is to maximize profit, and the question states, how many parents and students should attend in order to maximize profits? Let's start off by defining our variables. Let's start off by saying let x equal the number of tickets sold and this is going to be sold to adults and let y equal the number of tickets sold to students and you really need to write this out each time because I think it helps solidify what it is you're trying to solve. So now we have x and y and let's go ahead and set up our objective function first. So let's write out the function for profit and we usually call profit z. I'm going to make sixteen dollars for every adult ticket sold and I'm going to make eight dollars for every student ticket sold. So this is what I am trying to maximize. Now I need to figure out my constraints. You notice I highlighted the $16 and $18. Sometimes I like to go through and make sure I've used all the information I've been given. The next thing I can talk about is how the theater can only hold 150 people. So if I wanted to write that out as a constraint, I would say the students and the adults, or I should have said the adults and the students, have to be less than or equal to 150. That is, I can't sell more tickets than the theater can hold. The next constraint is a little bit harder to decode. Every two adults must bring at least one student. Well, let's think about that. So if I have y being the number of students, that's got to be greater than or equal to the number of adults divided by 2. That's because for every adult you have to have at least one student. So let's look at this. If x was equal to 2, that is if I had two adults, then 2 divided by 2 would be 1 and I'd have to have at least one student. And that makes sense. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I put in some simple numbers to see if my constraint makes sense. So I now have my constraints and I have my objective function. We're going to use the constraints in terms of a graph. So let's go ahead and do that. And I've gone ahead and started on a new piece of paper. Alright, here's my XY graph. Now notice I'm only looking at quadrant one. That's because I'm only going to sell positive tickets for adults and positive tickets for students. So I'm only looking in quadrant one. Let's graph my first equation. I have X plus Y is less than or equal to 150. First, I'm going to ignore the inequality. I'm going to graph this as a equality, that is, as a straight line without worrying about shading just now. If x plus y equals 150, then I'm going to graph by my intercepts. And for my y-intercept, that's when x is equal to 0. If x is 0, then y is simply equal to 150. So that's the point 0, 150 and I'll do the same for the x-intercept. The x-intercept is when y is equal to 0, so I'll have x plus 0 equals 150, and again, that works out to be the point 150 comma 0. So let's go ahead and graph this. Let's see, I'm going to have 100, 200, 300 on my x, and the same for my y. So my point 0 comma 150 is here, and my point 150 comma 0 is there, and I'll go ahead and connect the dots. Now I do have to worry about shading, so let's go back to my linear inequality, and let's use a test point of 0, 0. If x is 0 and y is 0, is the equality, I'm sorry, the inequality 0 is less than 150 true? I believe it is, so that means we'll be shading in this section. Alright, that's our first inequality. Now we have the second inequality to deal with. That is, y 
is greater than or equal to x divided by 2. Again, I'm going to initially make this an equality so I can graph the line first. Well, this, this is actually quite easy. This is already in the form y equals mx plus b. The b, or y-intercept, is 0, and the slope is 1 half. That is, we'll go up 1 and over 2. And I could pick a point such as x equals 200, and if x is equal to 200, 1 half times 200, well, that looks like that would equal 100, so we'd have the point 200 comma 100, which I've gone ahead and plotted right here. You could also use your calculator to help you graph this. And again, we're going to draw this straight line, and now we have to pick another test point. The trouble is I can't use my favorite test point, 0, 0, because that actually falls on the line. So let's pick this test point here, which is the point 0, 150. That's clearly not on our line, so we can go ahead and use that. So I would have x is 0, 0 divided by 2, and y being 150. Is 150 greater than or equal to 0? Well, yes it is. So that means we'll be shading this area above the line, because we want to include the test point 0, 150. So our final area is the area that is both red and green, and I'll color this in in purple, and this is our feasible set. These are all the things that can make our two constraints true. All right, I've redrawn this graph, and we need to now focus on these three corner points. And we're going to plug those corner points back into our objective function, which was the 16x plus 8y is equal to z. So this point that's the point 0, 150. This point is the point 0, 0. And then we've got to find the point of intersection. You can do this multiple ways. If you go back and remember that this was caused by our two constraints, where x plus y was equal to 150, and then y was equal to 1 half x. And I'm going to do this using my calculator. So, let's go ahead and go into y equals. I'm going to do this graphically. My first equation is x plus y equals 150. Well, I can't plug it into my calculator in that form. So let's go ahead and look at this. x plus y is equal to 150. I need to solve for y, so I'll subtract x from both sides. So y is equal to negative x plus 150. And we're going to go ahead and plug that into our calculator. Negative x plus 150. Our next equation is already in slope-intercept form, and we'll just say 0.5x. And let's go ahead and graph this. Well, let's see, there's our second line. I don't see the first line. Well, if I go back to my graph, I know this goes up to 150 in y and 150 in x. So I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to change my x minimum to 0, because again, we're not selling a negative number of adult tickets. And let's make our x max 200. y min will make 0, and y max will make 200. And now let's go ahead and graph it. All right, and this is the point that we're interested in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on second, and then over the trace button, it has calc, and I'm going to go down to 5 for intersect. And that's pretty close, so I'm going to hit enter for the first curve, enter for the second curve, and enter for guess. And it tells me that's the point x is equal to 100, y is equal to 50. So that's my third point, 100 comma 50. And now what we'll do is we'll take those three corner points and plug them into our objective function. All right, our first point is 0, 0. 16 times 0 plus 8 times 0 equals, well, that equals 0. And that makes sense. If we don't sell any tickets, we're not going to make any money. The next equation is 16 times 0 plus 150 times 8. And let's see what that equals. That looks like it'll be $1,200. Let's look at our last case. 16 times 100 plus 8 times 50, and that gives us a value of $2,000. So it looks like 
to make the most amount of money, I'm going to sell 100 adult tickets and 50 student tickets.